Hello. If you like bridges, then Budapest on the Danube is a must-go to city. Six of the bridges are architecturally distinct and aesthetically pleasing in different ways. So let's take a look. First of all, let's look at a map. To the west is the area called Buda. To the east is the area called Pest. Between them, running from north to south, is the river Danube. This is a road sign to the first bridge, Margit Heed. Margit is Margaret in English, Heed is bridge in English. From here, the bridge seems to span the river like any other bridge, but its distinctive feature is the large kink in the middle. From this angle, the bridge is clearly constructed of two arms. On the deck itself, the bus is going around 30 degrees from one arm to the other. The reason for this can be seen on this photograph. The island called Margaret Island splits the Danube into two branches. On the map, you can see that each arm of the bridge is parallel to the channel line of the river passing beneath it. The bridge structure is a series of simple arches, formed from iron elements. As a result, this stunning bridge has a standout, unique aesthetic. The bridge was blown up in the war, but reconstruction started soon afterwards and it was completed by August 1948. Oh yes, we can't overlook the ornate statues. On the pillar nearest the bank is Nike, the winged goddess of victory. And on the adjacent pillar is Hercules, the champion of the weak and protector of mankind. All these artworks add a dramatic charm to the Margaret Bridge. On the Buddha side, the traffic makes its way onto the bridge via the Margit Boulevard. At the centre of the bridge, there is a third arm, and that takes you onto the Margaret Island. On the Pest side is the district which was built between the wars. Its architecture is Bauhaus, making it distinctly different from the other parts of the inner city. The bridge leads down to the St. Ishvan Boulevard and the Inner Ring Road. And on the right is the quiet Yesai Mari Square, which pays respect to Najimre. Najimre was the leader of the unsuccessful uprising against Russian rule in 1956, a place for quiet contemplation. Across the road is the tram terminus. The number two tram will take us to all six bridges. Signage for the chain bridge looks like this. Lance is chain, heed is bridge. Lanceed in English is chain bridge. We are now heading down river from the Margaret Bridge and the chain bridge is centre stage. This is one of Budapest's great river views. The number two tram is coming to a stop and will drop you at the chain bridge. Getting off here you get this dramatic view of the bridge. It is a historic form of suspension bridge, which was completed in 1849. It was Budapest's first permanent bridge. Until 1849, there was only one Budapest bridge, a pontoon ship bridge, which was in service from spring until autumn. Now, why is it called a chain bridge? Well, very simply, the deck is suspended from chains. This can be a bit puzzling until you consider that a chain is a series of connected links. Between every two massive bolts is one link. As you look up, you can see that each link consists of 12 flat wrought iron plates. So there you have it. On the Buddha side, the chains are anchored to the Adam Clark Square. And you could sit on the anchor point if you've had a mind to. At both ends of the bridge, there are two lines carved in stone. They are similar in design to the bronze lines of Trafalgar Square. Ironically, the Budapest lions were installed first. The bridge was blown up at the end of the Second World War. On this photo, you can see one of the lions. The two towers remained intact, and as early as 1949, they'd made a really good job of reconstructing the whole bridge. On the Buda side, the bridge leads on to Adam Clark Square, named after the engineer who was in charge of the construction. Now, this was no mean feat. At the time, the Hungarians were in a war of independence. At the far side of the Adam Clark Square is the tunnel excavated to give better access to the bridge. There is a curious oval structure in the square. It is called the Zero Stone. Originally, distances by road to the bridge were measured from the Zero Stone. 
On the skyline, there clearly stands a bird. It is the mythical Hungarian bird of prey that they call the Turul. You'll probably want to get up to the Buda Castle district, in which case one way is to take the funicular railway. Up above the bridge on one side sits the palace, and to the other side sits the historic Matyas Church, whose original construction goes back to the second half of the 14th century. Turning our attention to the Pest side, we can see the Parliament building. One of the best places from which to get a photograph of the Parliament building is where I'm standing on the chain bridge. On the Pest side, the bridge is anchored to Seicheny Square. As you come off the bridge, you will normally see a host of people at the riverside. They are looking at a Holocaust memorial to some 3,500 people. Between 1944 and 1945, the Arrow Cross militia ordered these people to take off their shoes and then shot them at the river's edge. The shoes, beautifully crafted in iron, are a permanent fixture. The chain bridge leads onto Seicheny Square, which is named after the Hungarian statesman Count Seicheny. It was he who instigated the planning of the chain bridge. As you come off the bridge onto the square, you directly face the Art Nouveau Gresham Palace. This is now the Four Seasons Hotel, and just along from that, it's a simple matter to make your way up to the St. Stephen's Basilica. So there it is, a brilliant example of engineering from the first part of the 19th century. That bridge on screen is a pedestrian bridge over a major highway. From here, the traffic gets into lane according to bridge. One of these is the Erzibet Heed, which in English is the Elizabeth Bridge. Coming downstream from the chain bridge, we see the Elizabeth Bridge in an exquisite panorama. This suspension bridge with its slender white cables is a truly majestic beauty. It's a modern bridge opened in 1964. Before the war, it was a rather handsome suspension bridge. The piers are on land, and at the time, the span was the biggest in the world. As you can see, it's another chain bridge. The Elizabeth Bridge takes its name from the popular Queen Consort of Hungary, who had been assassinated five years before it was opened. Blown up in the war, it was the only bridge not to be rebuilt. The present bridge was built on the same foundations as the original bridge. Thus the span is the same length as the original. At the Buddha end, the bridge sweeps into the Galliert Hill. High on the hill is the statue of St. Galliert, who, according to legend, was thrown to his death from this hill. Below that is the statue of Elizabeth. That she learned to speak Hungarian was a notable achievement. On the Pest side, the oldest church in Pest stands next to the bridge. Built in the 14th century, it has seen many phases of restoration. Eyal Nopal Christus with Christ day and night. The bridge funnels into Sabad Shaito Street with its magnificent architecture. We can't leave without reference to the Hungarian acrobatics pilot Peter Besenyei. Here he is taking off from the Elizabeth Bridge. They call this Sobotchag Heed. In English, this is the Freedom Bridge. It is a cantilever truss bridge with a suspended middle span built in 1896. The bridge imitates the general outline of a chain type bridge, which was considered an aesthetically preferable form. On each of the four masts, there sits a bronze bird. This is the Hungarian mythical Turl. And as you come off the bridge, there are these splendid 19th century lanterns. 
which was blown up in the war, and for a while after the war, they connected the two ends with a pontoon bridge. The bridge was the first in the city to be rebuilt after World War II. A number of buses and trams crossed the bridge, as well as other road vehicles. Tourists are attracted to the squares on either side of the bridge. On the Buddha side is the St. Galliard Square and the Galliard Hotel. On its forecourt is a curious little dome. Its design mirrors that of the dome on the roof of the hotel. Under this dome are the baths, which are fed by natural warm springs. Under the little dome is a drinking fountain, which is also fed by natural springs. Towering above the square is the Freedom Statue, which can be seen from miles around. On the Pesh side of the bridge, tourists can relax in Fovem Square. On the other side of the square, described as a palace, is the Great Market Hall. This followed the European fashion, where urban residents could get all their groceries under one roof. Inside it is massive. There are three floors offering everything you need. On the second floor are the eateries, where you can eat traditional food. On the embankment in the 1870s, they built the main customs house. The name Favam Square literally means Main Customs Square. Today, it is the Corvinus University. It's a major site in Budapest, with its figures from Greek mythology. These symbolised Hungary's industry, commerce and agriculture in the 1870s. <laughs> The next bridge is Petofi Heed. In English, that is Petofi Bridge. Petofi was a key figure in the Hungarian Revolution of 1848 and became Hungary's national poet. This bridge lacks the usual grandiose style of Budapest bridges. However, the arch is considered to be the most pleasing of bridge forms and it works well for Petofi as well. Structure-wise, it is a deck truss bridge. At the time it was opened in 1937, political and economic problems demanded no-frills functionality. Aesthetics had to take a back seat. Like all the other bridges, it was blown up by January 1945. Eventually, the bridge was rebuilt between 1950 and 1952. There's a walkway on the Petofi Bridge, but a word of caution for walkers. It's a very narrow walkway, and cyclists are not always as careful as these two. At the Buddha side, you'll see the buildings of the Budapest University of Technology and Economics. Just to the south of the bridge, swinging on the river, there's a famous venue called the A38. It's a cultural venue with various concerts and other events all through the year. The traffic moves fast across this bridge, which on the Pest side leads to the inner ring road. <laughs> Last but not least is the Rakotsi Heed. In English, that is Rakotsi Bridge. And it was named after Count Rakotsi, leader of the Hungarian uprising against the Habsburgs in the early 1700s. I was standing here in the lovely riverside setting called Kopasi Gat, and I wondered, what were those red girders in the distance? It turned out they were part of the Rakotsi Bridge, and a bit of a tease. So let's sort it out. First of all, the number two tram will drop you close to the Rakotsi Bridge. It actually drops you outside the National Theatre. Alongside the National Theatre is the Palace of the Arts. It's the modern cultural centre they call Mupa. Alongside is the Rakotsi Bridge, built in 1995. A very strange construction indeed. The structure is a steel girder bridge supported by three river piers. It's as simple as that. But the feature that grabs your attention are those red giants striding down the central reservation. They're nothing to do with the structural mechanics of the bridge. They are the lighting system. On top of each column, there are two mirrors. Below them in that nest are high performance halogen reflectors, which shine the light up to the two mirrors. The mirrors disperse the light evenly across the roadway. The pavement and cycle path are illuminated with the help of neon tubes. From the river, these columns appear as five striking silhouettes. At night, they are the unmistakable columns of the Rakotsi Bridge. 
The bridge was built in 1995 as part of the infrastructure required to develop the industrial part of South Buda. Would you say that the bridge is aesthetic? Well, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I like it. Come night time and the Danube lights up. It's interesting to see what this section of river looked like in 1886. Amongst other things, the strategic sighting of the palace and the citadel is clearly evident in this painting. Today, well, it looks like this. A river city graced by the wonderful variety of its bridges. Well, there it is. A personal view of six of the Budapest bridges. Thank you for watching. Until next time, Wiesel Latasra.